Right. Hit it. All right, everybody. It's good to see you all again. Um, this is Kenny Rampton here, uh, chiming in from New York City with the Las Vegas Youth Jazz Orchestra and uh, their fearless leader, Gary Cordell. And we got Kurt Miller on the line, who, who uh, is the audio engineer and did all audio and video work for our upcoming video. And um, students from um, the youth orchestra, I think Lauren Cordell is, is on board too. She's one of our mentors. And we've got a very, very special guest today. Um, I'm so happy he could join us, man. He's not only one of the greatest trumpet players alive, um, he's also an absolutely brilliant composer and arranger and just one of the baddest musicians on the planet today. He's an inspiration to me regularly. I sit next to him in the Jazz Link Center Orchestra trumpet section. Um, not only is he a, a constant and consistent inspiration to me, he, I'm very proud and lucky to be able to call him one of my best friends. Um, and he's here joining with us uh, today to talk to you guys about the arrangements that he's given us for the Las Vegas Youth Orchestra to play. And the first one we've recorded is his arrangement um, that he wrote of Wayne Shorter's composition, Armageddon, that um, I'm so excited about putting this out because we just, we just finished it and it sounds great. And um, with no further ado, man, I want, I want all these students, I want you guys to think of good questions to ask Mr. Printup, but I want to pass, the, uh, pass it over to Marcus and um, just share what, what, anything you'd like to share with us, Marcus, you want to talk about your process, about that arrangement, Armageddon specifically, um, anything you'd like to share with, with, uh, with these guys, we would all love to hear. Marcus Printup. Thank you. Sounds fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, it's great to be here with you. Um, and thank you, Kenny, for asking me to do this. And, um, you know, I had a great band director in, in high school. Well, actually, he was in middle school. He's my middle school band director, and he was a jazz musician, played incredible tenor saxophone. And I never forgot him because he was the one that lit that spark. So for all your teachers, Kenny, Mr. Cordell, Ms. Cordell, for all, you know, just always know that you will always think about them. You always remember them in your future and thank them when you can, because it's great to have someone looking out for you like they are you. So now to the music, y'all sound fantastic. I checked out the recording yesterday and it sounds great. It's just, it's an honor for my chart to be played by you. So thank y'all for playing it. And like Mr. Rampton said, if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask, but I can just say a few things about what I heard on the recording. It was fantastic, great solos, great, I mean, great part playing. Um, something I noticed about your sounds that was really unique. I heard some, well, I don't like to use the word vibrato because if I think vibrato, it's something that's forced as opposed to feeling. So I heard a lot of feeling in these parts, man. It, it just felt so good to hear. Um, um, da, 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 ba, da, ba, that kind of thing, as opposed to da, 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 da. I heard ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. like that moan that you get when you go to church down south or somewhere or in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what this is all about. It was beautiful, man. Some great solos. Wrote some notes here. What's um? Is it Lai Maragi? L L A I? Is it? Is it how you pronounce your name? Lai? Eli. 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 It, oh, so it's L L A I is Eli, right? I L A I. I L A I. Oh, okay. I, I missed the the Q there. So that's the first one's an I. Great. You sound smooth, man. I heard it. beautiful. No, you trombone. Play, no, trombone, right? That's the trombone solo, right? Yeah. Yes, and I like your high G flat up there. That's you, man, you're reaching up for the stars, man. Beautiful, <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Yes, um, just so you know, Eli, you mind if I if I brag on uh, brag on Please, you for a second? Man. Sure. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> um, Eli has been accepted to and is committed to go to Juilliard next year. Woo! All right. Congratulations, so we're going to be man. seeing him around a lot. We're That's be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, Good man. job, man. That's awesome. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, great, 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 man. I mean, all those solos are great. There's Ian and there's, is it Kite? K-I-T-E? Is that, is that your name? Kite? Yeah. Okay, hey, y'all yeah. all, all sound good, man. I can tell that Kite maybe checks out some Lee Morgan a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I can hear that, man. <laughs> Thank and you. Ian, Ian has some shades of, of Wayne Shorter in his sound as well. Yes, sir. You know, sounds fantastic, man. And, um, you know, should I do this? 
Kenny knows me well, as well as anyone, and, and he knows I'm kind of spontaneous. I'm going to try to find something real quick that um, I know that you have not heard before. Oh. And as I'm talking, you give me like, like no, no, no more than 10 seconds to find it. Let's go to Dropbox. Cool. And I will talk about it as I'm looking for it here. When Wayne Shorter came to do this with us, um, I recorded some of the rehearsal. And I have a recording of Wayne playing this in rehearsal, this, this long extended solo of him playing, but I'll just play like a little bit of it if I can find it. And if I can't find it now because I don't want to waste time. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Let's see if it, if it pops up on my Bluetooth. And if you can hear him, hear it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to send this to Kenny later because I don't want to waste time because it's, it's 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 not coming up right now. But um, Wayne Shorter has his Wayne ha he has this wail to his sound that just makes it so human. Just oh, oh, wee, wee. this mm, it's so beautiful, man. And that's really kind of the concept behind most of this arrangement. Like the, the top, you know, it starts. I actually changed the chords as to how Wayne recorded the chords, like on on the the actual record, here yeah, I have that right here queued up here. Okay, so just taking all those chords and just try, trying to figure out how to like texturize them. Who's gonna play what note? You know what what you know? Who's gonna play the lead? Who's gonna play the, the harmonies? Blah blah blah. It was kind of hard to put together, so. I kind of went away from the recording and just figured out what the chords were and and kind of added and made my own chords with it. I I do y'all hear some moaning or something? You guys hear some moaning? Yeah. That's a dog. Oh, it's a dog. That's cute. That's a dog in the background. <laughs> Sorry. I love that. No, 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 no. I love him. I love him. I love dogs, man. I love them. I, I muted it. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. I miss my dog. So, um, sorry, so, I thought I was muted. <laughs> uh, oh, no, you're fine. So, um, at the end of the introduction, there's this chaos section because Armageddon apparently means like the, the uh, end of the world. So, it's like the end of the world, there's stuff going on, you know, you know, there's a lot of chaos, and then all of a sudden, the chaos dies, and then that's that's when the melody comes in. It's like you know, it, it, it's like the fire. Look, the dog is so cute. Look at the dog. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? He's like doing this. He's... <laughs> Sorry, man. So, um, okay, let me be serious. So after the chaos diminishes, it's like the fire simmering and there's still life. And that's what, when the, when, when the three horns come in together with the melody, that's what that represents. So I tried to make a big contrast between the, you know, the, you know, the, the intro and then the chaos. Oh, it's crazy, it's crazy, crazy. It's crazy, but everything crazy has to calm down. And then be cool. So that's the concept behind writing that. So, um, and there's one thing that I wanted to show you in the, in the solely part, this is 153. I actually transcribed a few of Wayne's lines, but tell me if you guys reckon, recognize this right here. Right here. Yeah. yeah, so I stole that from Wayne and gave it to the band. So there's like three or four sections in there to where I got stuff from his solo, a few things I got from Lee's solo. But for the most part, the shot course, when I write shot courses, I mean, some, sometimes you know, the, the, the melody will come to me naturally, but sometimes um, I just basically improvise over a course. So for this one, and I tried to find those recordings, of, those recordings of me improvising over the form, but I couldn't find them. But I just played like eight courses over Armageddon, and then I just kind of picked and choose which parts I like. So that whole shot course is, you know, pretty much me, pretty much comes from me improvising, and I, and and I made that orchestration for the big band, and you know, you know, <laughs> between me improvising and Wayne solo. So that's how I, that's how I came up with that, you know, and yeah, man. So. I can answer any questions about it if you, if you got any questions, but 
Y'all sound fantastic, man. I'm just really happy that y'all are playing it. It makes me feel good. So uh, any That's questions? great, Marcus. Yeah. Now, I, I've noticed I've played quite a few of your charts in the band, and I've noticed that you use that technique um, fairly often where you'll actually transcribe you know, like on the Dizzy tune, with these guys got to play through that once or twice as well. Oh yeah, yeah. On yeah. Um, uh, what's Fiesta, the name of it? Fiesta, Fiesta Mojo. Mojo. Fiesta Mojo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. on that, you took pieces of Dizzy solos, yes, right, and worked yes. them into the shout. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, that's just like the ultimate of language. Dizzy Gillespie, my God, he plays so much harmony, and you know, it's just like studying a class on harmony when you when you transcribe Dizzy or Monk or anyone one of those cats. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love, I love, I just got to tell you, I, and I've told you before how much I love your writing and arranging, and I, I love the concept of, of that, of you actually taking a solo that Dizzy or Wayne Shorter um, played in their solo and taking pieces of that and creating a shout chorus based mm -hmm. on material from the original re recordings of the songs. Right. Um, but when you do that, like I've tried to do that and it doesn't work when I try and do it. So how do you make that work so well? I, I I never knew that like you just described how you play you played eight choruses and recorded it, yeah. and you you piece things together to make it. It just makes such perfect sense the way yeah. that you do that. It's really actually brilliant. Um, cool, thanks, man. Did you learn that process from somebody, or is that something you just came up with on your own? I just kind of came up with it on my own, and um, I remember this documentary on Thelonious Monk. It's a fantastic documentary called Straight No Chaser. I think Clint Eastwood did this documentary um, in the late 80s or whatever. Um, so who was it, Tio Marcia, the, what's, what's his name, the, the, the producer? Marcia for, Rowan, yeah, yeah. Tio Macero. Yeah, Macero. Thank you, Gary. So he was talking about um, improvising. So Monk was asking Theo, uh, Tio to play something original. And then he goes, well, you know, I can't compose. And he said, well, if you can improvise, you can compose. Because when you when you when you improvise, you're making up something, and that's composition. So, Ted Nash, who's um, our second alto player, brilliant, he's brilliant, everything, a composer, musician, educator. Ted told me that pretty much, when he voices for the band, he doesn't really use a method. He just goes to the piano and just plucks some chords out, and it, if you know if if the chords sound good, on the piano, it's gonna sound good. Good, it's gonna sound good in the big band. Now the next, um, the next thing is just to try to find who's going to play which note. You know, like you know, maybe you have the Barry Sax playing lead on something for you know for the sax section. You know, you know, just to change the texture, and you know that's the fun part about everything is just finding who's going to play each note. But as far as um, that process of making you know make of making it work by playing your own solos and transcribing them or and and, and adding in other solos of other people, you know, it's a process, and I'm. I'm still trying to learn it myself. So, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. <clears throat> you know, but I think that yeah, as musicians, we just have to be confident in knowing that if it's sincere, you know, from our hearts, it's it's it, it's what we're feeling. You know, <clears throat> I took this arranging class in, in in college, and the teacher told me that I shouldn't transcribe Thelonious Monk because he played in fifths and fourths, and that didn't work. I'm like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> and I and I respect this teacher. I, he's a great musician. I'm not gonna call his name, but but I'm, I'm like, you know what? I mean, maybe try to find a make it work. Try to find a way to make it work if you're hearing it, you know. And that's what Monk was hearing. And this same teacher said that um, as far as jazz pianist, Monk was in a kind of different category because he didn't. And I quote, he didn't fit the mold of the other jazz pianists. I'm like, man, really? And I didn't know enough at that time to dispute him you know i was a student and, you know I'm, I'm kind of quiet about that kind of stuff but now i can have a conversation about it but um you know so it's just a matter of just being true to to to, to what you are and um you know it's hard to find your voice i mean i'm still trying to find my voice um i was telling some friends on facebook um i found these old tapes which is really funny i got them right here i found some cassette tapes last night I found cassette tapes. I found some old um, um, recordings of me playing in college that I haven't heard for <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> years ago, you know, back, like back in the '90s, man. And just hearing how I played then, my playing was so innocent, and it it actually it it it, it actually brought me to tears a few times because like 
I could tell what was going on in my life as I was hearing myself play. I said, wow, man, okay, this was at 1993 or well, 92, 93. That was happening back then. I could feel that. And music is so profound. And whatever you write, whatever you play, that's you, you know? And as long as you're intent and as, as long as you're motivated to learn and, and, you know, and to progress, just be comfortable where you are as, as long as you know that you're climbing, you know, to, to get better. So I'm still trying to figure this whole thing out. You know, I mean, sometimes I try to write music. I don't hear anything and I have to just put it away. You know, um, as, um, as uh, Mr. Rampa can tell you, sometimes Winton will, will call us like maybe a week or so before we have a concert and ask us to, you know, to like make an arrangement, which is really hard, you know. So I just try to just do it and just trust that it's going to be cool. Sometimes it's cool, so, you know, sometimes it's not. But that's why it's really great to, you know, just, just to be in a band with great musicians, because even if things don't sound right, we can help each other, you know, just to make it right, you know, by, by how you play it and the suggestions that we give each other. So um, all that, all the above, I'm talking a long time, but you know, you, you get what I'm saying. And there's so much information with what you just shared with these kids, Marcus. Um, first thing I want to point out to all of them is Marcus Printup, who in all honesty, and I'm not just saying that because he's saying this because he's here. Marcus has got the most identifiable, identifiable sound of any trumpet player alive today. I'll stop that. Period. Absolutely. Truly. Oh, man. Truly. Trying, man. The, the, I know I hear one note and I know that that's Marcus Printup. Um, it's the truth. And yet he's still looking for his sound. He's still searching. And that, and yeah. that kind of humility is what makes him such an incredible musician, you know? And Thank when he know. says he goes back and he listens, Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, man. Um, and when he says he go, he just found a tape of him playing from, from back in, what was it? 1927. <laughs> <laughs> He found a tape of him playing from years ago and he goes back and he listens to that and he yeah. hears he hears his playing from 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it is. Um, and he remembers what he was dealing with in his life at that time. It brings that spirit back to him. He remembers yeah. himself then from that recording. And that's why it's so important mm -hmm. uh, to us with, you know, with me and Gary and, and um, Donnie and, and Kurt Miller, all of us with, um, joy involved with this program that's why it's so important that we recorded you guys this semester even though we rehearsed for six weeks we had six rehearsals that's it you yeah. all are from different schools you played wow. together six times that's great and man. not everybody's even their favorite rehearsal we wanted to document that for you guys that's because fantastic. 20 30 years from now you're going to go back and listen to that recording and you'll be like oh man that's when that covid hit and we were all at home and you're going to remember that uh this time and so you know, Mark is bringing that up, made me want to point that out to you guys, because I think it's so important. And, and I, I, I keep acknowledging this man for what he's done. Um, but I'm going to do it one more time to Kurt Miller, um, because I wanted to do something like this. And I, and I didn't see the way that we could possibly do it because we didn't have the money to pay somebody. It takes a lot of time, and a lot of energy to put a recording like this together with yeah. cell phone recordings. You know, yeah. and Kurt sent me a text and volunteered his time See, that's, to that's do this for you guys. That's you know, great. and I just, I can't say enough about Kurt Miller and the kind of person he is, man. So yeah, man, Kurt Miller. Good job, Kurt. That's Absolutely. great. Um, so with that said, we don't have a whole heck of a lot of time, but I would like, you know, these kids haven't heard the recording yet, Marcus. Oh, they haven't? No, okay. we're going we're gonna to launch it on Thursday. They were going to have a concert on, on May 7th, which is Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. going to be their final concert. So we decided yeah. since we can't do the final concert, we're going to launch this recording and post it on Facebook. Jazz Lincoln oh, Center has nice, agreed to man. post it for us. Nice, as nice, well. nice. That's and great. Um, so, but we would like to give them a little bit, a little taste of it, if that's Please, okay. Please, man. Oh, yes. Gary's got a few sections set up to, to roll for them to be able to hear. That's so great, like, who's man. Playing the, who's playing Marcus's part on this, the melody trumpet part? Who was that? That's Aries. Is Aries here? Aries. Yeah, I'm right here. Where's he yeah. at? Aries. I'm right yeah, here. man. Like Marcus was talking about the moan, the feeling, the vibration you were putting on that with your vibrato. Yeah, you got just, something. Just beautiful, man. Thank just you. Just beautiful, Aries. Thank I'm you. really proud of you, man. What's Thanks. your birthday, Aries? What's uh, your birthday, March? April 10th. Okay, there you go. Cool. My mom's yes. in Aries. Good to see oh, you. All right. Happy belated, man. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And I heard it coming from not just here. I heard it coming from a lot of, a lot of you guys. And you know, that what we've talked about in the few rehearsals we had talking about playing with nuance and feeling you guys are really getting that. And yeah. I, I couldn't be prouder. You guys really, you know, I texted it to Winton and I'm not going to tell you exactly what Winton said because he used a little profanity in a good way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. He, he really dug it and he commented on how hip you guys sounded yeah, and man. looked. Um, so, Gary, can you play a little bit? You want to play a little Absolutely. bit of the beginning first? Just give me a yeah, second. This... Why, hey, hey, Gary. Yeah. While you're getting that cued, I've got to say again, kudos to you and, 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 all, and all of y'all for getting this together. I teach at a college here in New Jersey, and there, there was a concert that was supposed to feature all, all of my arrangements. It was like 12 arrangements. It was, it, was, it was supposed to happen last week. So I made a suggestion that we get all the kids together because they were really dejected because, you know, because of all the COVID stuff and, you know, the concert was canceled. So I made a suggestion for them to do the same thing that you're doing. And the person there said, nah, it's just too much to get together. I was like, uh-huh, is it? Y'all need to check out the the jazz initiative because y'all got it together. So I'm going to tell them that. <laughs> no, but now so, you have, Marcus, you have it on tape. You can show it to them, man. Sounds fantastic. There you go. <laughs> got you. <laughs> All right, guys, this will be the first time you've seen this. So wow, here is, this is exciting. Here is the clip. Just give me a second. Nope, that's the wrong screen. Now we test. Oh. No, that's it. That's it. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, I see Here you. We go. I see Let's you. Play. Here we go. Three, four, one, two. There you go. There's the beginning. <laughs> the, sound, the sound isn't very good, but we got to see the video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds good, though. Kurt is the he's he's the perfectionist, and yeah. he's 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 the one who put together the sound and the video. <laughs> It'll sound a lot better when we see it live. Um, yeah, yeah. we we got a couple more clips if you guys want to see them. Uh, before you guys go into questions for Mr. Printup, you want to show those clips, Gary, real quick? Yeah, just keep talking. You're going to have to give me a second to cue this up, Kenny. Okay, so the <laughs> he's going to show the second clip, which is the second chorus of the melody when the whole band is playing, I think. Um, everybody, if everybody can mute while the clip is playing, I yeah, think it'll that, help. That, yeah, exactly. You know, we're not going to show you the whole thing because we don't have a whole lot of time, like I said, and, and I do want to make sure we get to any questions that you guys have. And hopefully you guys got some questions. Think of, <laughs> think of them because, you know, this is Marcus Printup, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I know Eli's got something brewing. Who's that? Eli, you said? Eli's always got some questions. Eli, there you go, Eli. Yeah. We're counting on you, Eli. Yeah, and I'm sure Eric's <laughs> got something. Okay, so here's, here's the second clip we wanted to play for you guys. All right, let's all mute. Sounds good, right. man. Yeah. Sounds, yeah. Sounds very good, man. Yeah, man. Hey, Gary, so Gary. I, just got a, I just got a message on my screen that said it got unlimited minutes all of a sudden on this meeting. Yeah, yeah I was going to tell everybody, we got unlimited minutes. Oh, cool. Awesome. They yeah, man. That. They do that sometimes. I was hoping they would <clears throat> offer. Great. <laughs>
Sounds so All good, right. man. Hey, 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 you know the part, um, let's see. Um, yeah. Like, like some, sometimes when we, when we play the ba 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 there's like a, how can I describe it? It's like a delay, but, you know, but we all feel each other, so. Hmm. You know, it just, you know, it just kind of sounds nice, you know, just to layer that together. If you're phrasing and you're kind of laid back, to, it sounds great like it is too. It sounds fantastic like it is. But it's just a, you know, just like another thing that you can work on. Wah, 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 wah. It's like you're singing, you know, like you're singing like a lullaby, you know, to that cute little dog. Wah, 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 <laughs> wah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, but man. Very nice. Cool. So, it, is there any other sections you want to play, or you want to do the question answer? Yeah, we have one more, one more section we wanted to play for you guys. Okay. So, you ready for it? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, man. I love it. I love it. Da -da 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 ah, nice dynamics. So yeah, man. Marcus, Marcus yes. I, was, I don't know if you're, you were aware, you know, uh, the whole time we had our rehearsals, okay. except for the last one, you know, you guys were on tour in Europe. Okay. And Kenny, uh, you know, whenever we had our rehearsals at 6.45 at night, it was like four o'clock in the morning for him. <laughs> I think but, I remember that now. Right, right. Yeah, he would, he I remember would, that. He would uh, FaceTime or Skype into every lesson. So he, I mean, every mm -hmm. uh, rehearsal, he was part of every rehearsal with us. That's yeah. awesome, Kenny. So him having the- 545. Yeah, him <laughs> having those insights of just what you were talking about, about, yeah, man. hey, we played this section a little back and everything. It yeah, was man. invaluable to have that, man. Y'all are looking to have Mr. Rampton, man. He, I mean, he's always talking about you. I'm not just saying it because he's here, but he's always talking about you guys, man. So that's a blessing to have you. Oh, 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 oh sorry about that. Awesome. You know what? I found that audio. I'm going to play Wayne Shorter's solo for you. Um, oh, cool. In rehearsal. Um, <laughs> sound okay? Yeah, it's all right. We can hear it. We can hear it. I hate to stop him, but I gotta say this. Wayne has Wayne hadn't played these tunes. He recorded these in the '60s, and for some of these tunes, it's the first time he that the first time that he played them since like you know what forty what fifty. Well, yeah, we're fifty now, Kenny. Forty six. Yeah. Now. Like, yeah, like we're getting old. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> so, so he, <coughs> this is like the this is like the, the first rehearsal he had. So he he's kind of trying to feel his way around the chords, and he's like he was eighty five years old at the no he was eighty one or eighty two <laughs> years old at the time. But if you listen to the ideas that he's playing and not the actual technique, it's, it's, it's just amazing. So let me, let me pull back a little bit. Here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
So the, 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 solo, the solo goes on and on, but Wayne was only supposed to play like two or three courses, but he kept playing. And I have the next solo, and I'm not going to step on Wayne's shoulders' toes, right? So, <laughs> okay, so at what, at what, it may be this next course, I thought he was finished, so I started playing, but he kept playing. But, but, but he, but he kind of looked back at me like, come on, let's play together. So here we go. It may be this course, I don't know. That's another take when we when we play together. But you know, just to, to, to the kind of stuff he's doing, he's he's playing like chromatics because he's trying to he's trying to find his way through the changes. So if you notice, he's like. You know, so that's that's kind of like his trick. But he can hear anything he wants to play too. So just it's just to me that's a brilliant solo, even though it's not as refined as his solo was on the recording. Um, it's still something really deep, you know, just to hear the mind of a genius working like that, you know. That's so interesting, Marcus. Yeah. You know, I mean, something you started off with when you're talking to the kids about when Wayne solos about the way he moans through the horn. He oh, gets that yeah. kind of a feeling. And you all, got, you all just heard him doing that all over the place. And something before we did the recording, we had like a little Zoom meeting with um, the three uh, soloists on it. And we talked about you know, developing ideas, theme and development. And you heard Wayne doing that constantly in that solo, play an idea and then play it up, you know, play it up a minor third or play, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, theme and development like we, we've talked about. And like you guys are, are learning to do. Mm -hmm. That was actually a beautiful solo by Wayne. Yeah, most definitely. He's a master. Well, yeah, man. What is it that the, 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 the Coltrane said about him? Someone said that Wayne Shorter sounded like scrambled eggs when he played. Because he's all over the place. But then Coltrane said... Yeah, you know, you, you know, but it's how he scrambles them. Those is what matters. Yeah, he scrambles them yeah. a certain way, and they, they they work. So that's what it sounds like, you know. Yeah. So who's got a question for Mr. Printup? Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Ian. All right. So there was this record I discovered. Um, it was with Cyrus Chestnut, I think James Carter. Soul Food. Um, 
Oh yeah, soul food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I I, I love that piece a lot, and I wanted to know like, <laughs> what the process of like recording in a recording studio is like. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, for that particular thing, you know, we we just, I think Cyrus gave us the music like a day before, and we we went in and played it, and um, we didn't really rehearse for that record. We just we all went and just just you know read, you know. My my high school band director told us he said to be you know, to, to make sure that your sight reading your sight reading chops are really down pat because you may be in New York at some point which I had no idea that I was going to be doing and you may get a piece of music and you you may have to record it the next day or that same day um, so that's really important I mean <laughs> Kenny can buy I mean, I mean Kenny is a far better sight re sight reader than I am but we we all lean on Ryan Kaiser because Ryan Ryan is great too so I you know I kind of I I kind of I'm kind of lazy with my sight reading because I know that, you know, because Kenny plays second and Ryan plays first. I know that the first and second parts are going to be cool. So I, I, I just kind of follow along with it. But, you know, you, you know, you, you know, but it's really important to, you know, just get your sight reading chops um, together, but also understand how to put the feeling into the music. Um, I forgot that piece. Da, da, ba, ba, da, ba. How's it go? That, that, that piece, Soul Food, Ian, remember that? Yeah, I'll pull it up right now. Oh, okay. Well, okay. If it's right there. Yeah, I got it. Uh, uh. Oh yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about music. I mean, there's there's songs I played that we all played, you know, like 20, 30 years ago. I still know the melody. I I still know these like like Clifford Brown those I learned when I was like 19. Mm -hmm. Um cuz it's more it's more than playing the notes. It's, it's, it's actually feeling the notes and internalizing those notes and making them and making those notes become a part of your, <clears throat> of, of your vocabulary. You know, the same thing as words, you know, when, when you're in English class or whatever class you learn the, the definition of a word, but then you have to learn how to use that word in the context of a sentence. So that's, you know, that's why we play jazz and that's why I still know that tune. And, um, but yeah, but I'm kind of getting away from your question. So just, you know, we just went in and played it, put the headphones on, and I think we only did like one one take of that, one, one or two wow. takes of that one, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's fun, man. I mean, but you you just did this. Well, you did you, you did the recording experience when you made this, you know, when you did Armageddon. So you know how it is. So how how was it for you to do? Um, how was it for you to do this session? Uh, it was really fun. It was uh, yeah. challenging for sure. I think the hardest part was probably the the solo. Yeah, because I wanted to take ideas like I listened to that recording with Wayne Shorter. Um, uh, I mean, both the Lincoln Center one and the one that he put out, but mm -hmm. I was just trying to take ideas, but not too much, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just okay, so like, if I were to ask you and Ashley, Ian, well, Ian, that's you, Kite and Eli, if I were to ask all of you to recite the, um, to recite the chords for the form, could you do it now? Uh, I don't have them per perfectly memorized, but I can That's okay. them, hear them. Yeah. That's okay. Well, Marcus Roberts, he's a great jazz pianist. Um, I met Marcus Roberts when I was in college back in, it was 1991, I think it was. And I met him and he came, you know, Marcus came to my college and he heard me playing, he heard me playing in a small group setting. <clears throat> so after that little mini concert that we gave him, he asked for, well, he asked someone to, to, you know, to uh, bring me to his office because, you know, he's blind. He can't come to me directly. So he, he asked someone to bring him the trumpet player. So I, I met him and we played a little bit and Marcus told me some really deep stuff. He said, hey, man, I can tell that you have a lot of talent, but I can also tell that you don't practice because your playing is chaotic <laughs> and it lacks order. Yeah. And at first I was shocked, but then for like for me, a split second, then I was like, tell me more because I want to learn. Mm -hmm. So he, he asked me if I knew Trinkle Tinkle, this monk tune. Oh, yeah. And I said, yeah, I know it. He said, okay, well, um, tell me the chord changes and play the melody. I was like, well, I can kind of play the melody, but, you know, but, I, but, but I, don't really know the, I don't really know the chords. I, I know the, some of them. He said, so you don't know the tune, you know of the tune. Mm. So you want to be thorough and like, and like really know the tune and go, you know, go to a pianist and get them to show you the chords. 
and just you know just you know, just just learn how to outline the chords just like the the, the root third fifth and seven um So just to just just learn the root third fifth and seventh of all those chords, and then you then you will be able to maneuver yourself around them freely, or, or more freely. So learn the tune. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. All right. Who else has got a question for Mr. Prindup? All right, Miles Ray. All right, Miles. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, how do you stay musically fresh? Because it's so easy to fall into bad habits and routines. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, one would think that we're musically fresh, and we are in, in the you know in in, in the jazz at the Flink Center Orchestra. I mean, there's so many great players, but I only get you know well, we only get a chance to make maybe solo one time per night, you know, because everyone in the band can play, which is a great thing. But I find that if I do a small group gig, I feel kind of naked on the band says, I mean, I don't know what to play. So I think it's important. It's important just to keep that brain active. Um, you know, just you know, get home and just play play some Avery songs, or just play through some changes on your own. You know, um, but you, you just have to keep on creating, keep on learning vocabulary, learn solos. I mean, there's there's so much vocabulary out there. Okay, and you play trumpet, I take it, because your name is Miles. <laughs> okay, so who do you check out? Well, I check out Miles Davis, obviously. Uh, no one was a given. Uh, but I also have a lot of CDs by Clifford Brown. Oh, yeah, there you go. Arturo Sandoval. Okay, right? beautiful. And I also have, I just picked up another uh, Dizzy Gillespie CD. Yeah, which one? Digging. Which one? Do you know the name of it? Uh, no, I couldn't tell you. It's just That's a compilation, good. really. Good, good, good. So have you learned any of Miles Davis or Clifford Brown solos? I have not. Yeah. But I was so that's, to. Yeah, man. That's where you start. Learn that language. And then, I mean, for like, I mean, which one was I listening to? Um, the one for uh, If I Were a Bell. Um, the, the mouse goes. I, I mean, just playing that solo, well, note for note, like Miles plays it, it feels like I'm playing it because it's become a part of me. So if I'm playing that two, if I'm playing that same song on a gig, and I and I, and I kind of play in that style of Miles Davis, but play my own stuff. So. <laughs> So you, you know, just just play. You just gotta play, and um, regardless of how bad it sounds to you, just keep on playing. I was um, I was recording myself improvising the other night, and it felt like it sounded like crap. But then after I listened to it, it's like it's not that bad. It can be much better. But you know that you know you, you just have to put yourself out there. I was talking to this great trumpet player. His name is Hugh Reagan. He's out in Denver, Colorado. He called me a few days ago. The, because I did an interview with a former student of his who I didn't, um, well, I didn't know that the student that I had was also was also a student of his, but I told the student that I learned how to do whisper, whisper tones through uh, Hugh Reagan, so he put us back in touch. I haven't talked to him in about 15 years. And um, man, um, I brought this story up for a reason. I totally forgot why, why I brought this up. Oh man, dang it. I that do. Um. <laughs> oh, that's that's the old man moment. What, what was I talking about right right before I mentioned Hugh Reagan? What was I talking about? Anybody? Miles. Okay. Uh, uh, whisper tones. Recording whisper yourself. Tones. Thank you. Whisper, whisper, whisper tones. tones. Whisper, whisper tones. tones. Oh man, it's gone now, man. Darn it, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. But anyways, I did talk to him, and it was nice to talk to him. About, <laughs> <laughs> it was about practicing something, man. I totally forgot. We were talking about if I were a bell, practicing, 
it's going to come back to me and I'll make it. I'll, you're talking about making it your own, uh, playing miles, but making it your own. Yeah, man, it's gone now. It's, it's all good. It's all good. Phew, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, I'm, I wish I was 18 again. Glad it's it, not just me. Huh? What's that? I'm glad, I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good to reconnect with them and. Uh, we talked about the whole the, the whole process of doing whisper tones again. I'm, I'm trying to make it come back. And if it doesn't come back in the next 10 seconds, we're just going to go on. And we talked about it. We, we talked for, uh, it's gone. It's gone. So <laughs> it's so, gone. Uh, I think, uh, I think Keller had a question. I think he had his hand up. What's up, Keller? Killer, Keller. Hey, <laughs> my question was, um, how do artists like Jackson 5, Earth, Wind, Fire, Rick James inspire you, as well as your gospel background, how they have inspired you and how they still continue to inspire you? Oh, man, that's, that's, that's a deep question. I, I love that kind of music, man. And I was, again, in my cassettes, I was checking out. I've got Bird with Strings. I've got Count Basie. And I have Prince. <laughs> yeah. I love that music, man. I mean, that's the music that I listened to before I heard jazz. I didn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to have, you know, parents or, you know, family or any extended family that listened to jazz music until I was, you know, well, my, my band director, my, my middle school band director um, played some Dizzy Gillespie for us when I was in seventh grade. And I was like, wow, that's great. But then I went and played football or something and forgot about it. So um, I never really had that foundation until I was in college. Um, so before I learned jazz, you know, I was in church, you know, with, with my mom and dad doing, you know, so singing and playing gospel music, or mostly singing gospel music. And Rick James, like you said, um, huge Michael Jack, huge Michael Jackson fan. Um, Marvin Gaye, Earth, Wind & Fire. Oh man, uh, all those groups. Those groups have a profound effect upon me. And when I play sometimes it comes out, you know, and. You know, just like anything we listen to. I mean, I like what's what, what's that song? Um, da -da 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 oh, uh, breeze. Oh, I love that song, man. Summer breeze, yeah. Ah, woo! That gets me, man. Music. So, Duke Ellington summed it up. Duke Ellington said that there's only two kinds of music: good and the other stuff. So if it's good, <laughs> I like it. So. You know that you know, that's a part of who I am, and I'm not afraid to admit that. That's that's what that's that's what I'm what I'm dealing with, you know. But once I once I found jazz music when I went to college, I remember my first year of college, the same as Kenny, as Mr. Rep, excuse me, um, was was uh, 1985, and I remember being really up on the Grammys. Like I knew all the top bands, you know, blah 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 blah. So after spending one year of college being exposed to, um, you know, to, to jazz music. I watched the Grammy Awards in 1986 and the top band was Dire Straits. It's a group called Dire, D-I-R-E, Straits, Dire Straits. And I had not even heard of them. And I was like, wow, is this some kind of futuristic award show? But I realized that I'd fallen in love with jazz music. That's when I, that, that's when I found out who Miles Davis was, where did Miles Davis come from, Dizzy Gillespie, where did Dizzy come from, Roy Eldridge. Where did Roy come from, Louis Armstrong? So my mindset was just totally away from pop music. And not that I don't like pop music. I, I still like some stuff that's out there now. I mean, I don't really know much that's out there, but um, jazz is my love now between jazz and gospel and classical music um, or, you know, which another, that's also a loaded term because I think that jazz is also classical music. Um, that's our classical music that was created here in the States. So, um, so, Everything I listen to has a has an effect on me, and the same with you as well. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Cool. Yeah, well, I mean the the one thing, I mean I, I was thinking of as soon as you said that was something that you got to, was what Duke Ellington said. Yeah, there's two kinds of music. Good music good. and the other kind. He didn't even acknowledge. He didn't even go yeah. negative. He didn't even say bad music. He said the other kind. Yeah, that's exactly. something I loved about Duke is he was always so positive. Exactly. And, I love it, man. Yeah, What's this, man. That, that suite he did, um, the Afro-Eurasian Eclipse Suite? He did it in either yeah. in the late 60s or the 70s. It's a, a song y'all I know y'all have heard. It's called Chinwazari. It's, it's kind of like funky. 
It's like, oh, I do. You know, Duke's like, you know, doing this. He's like, in the band, he's director doing that, that hip hop stuff. I was like, all right, Duke, get your swag on. <laughs> yes, but yeah, sir. man. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Who else has got a question for Mr. Print Up? Kai. Marcus, this is our youngest member. He's 11 years old. He's right, a Kai? terrific young trumpet player. All right, he, Kai. Yes. Kai, what you got? So I was going to ask, uh, okay, so I was going to ask, uh, in jazz music, it's a story about life and it's a story about heart. Woo. So uh, I know jazz started very, very long time ago. Well, not to me, but uh, it started a long time ago <laughs> when there were, there were slaves coming over and they developed their own kind of music. Mm -hmm. That was a combination from Africa and music here. And I was wondering if you could, uh, what your insights on or how it changed, because I noticed when I'm listening to like Miles Davis and Clifford Brown versus, uh, let's see, Joey Alexander or Wynton Marsalis or all those, mm -hmm. those, those cast today, I was wondering uh, what you thought about how, how society has influenced how jazz has changed since, since it first started. Man, that's a great question, man. You're going to be the question. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> you know, you've heard Miles Davis, um, his, um, his recording, well, the CD, well, the, the LP is called um, Kind of Blue. Yes. You know, kind of, and there's a tune called So What on there, right? Yeah. Listen to that recording. Um, I think it was that in 58, Kenny, 59, one of those, those years? Yeah, so what? yeah, right around there. 58. Yes. So when Miles recorded that, um, it was cool, right? Yeah. Then, then he recorded that same tune again, I think, in 1963. Can you tell me from a, a historical perspective what was happening in, 19, in 1963? Uh, let's see. I know it's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, not much of a I'm not much of a history. That's teacher. okay. That's when the country was, we were in peril. Um, President Kennedy um, was assassinated that year. I think a mega Evers. I mean, there's there a lot of things going on, and there's a lot of anger, um, a lot of um, distress. I think you could say. So Miles, Miles was actually assaulted um, outside of a jazz club, you know, by policemen. So he was going through a lot of stuff. So he recorded that same tune, and the times had changed drastically. But it's much faster. It's angry, you know, like you know, like there's a there's a kind of aggression, but there's also it's cathartic as well, you know? So that's, that's a comparison I can give for that, you know? So the world definitely changes. And I think Miles Davis was a master at changing his style. I mean, Miles Davis, I think I can safely say this, you know, when he first came about in what, 44, 45, playing with Charlie Parker, his style changed like every two or three years. Um, you know, well, not so much his style changing, but the kind of music that he played, it's all jazz, but, the intent behind, you know, the, the intent behind what came out of his horn changed with the times, you know, from the 40s, 50s, well, then he, he played the, 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 the cool jazz, um, the late 40s with the birth to cool. Then he was playing, you know, bebop with Charlie Parker before then. Then he, then he went into the other kind of cool jazz, playing kind of blue. Then he did the stuff with strings with, with Gil Evans. Then he um, played different kind of music with, with Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, Tony Williams, and then he did some electric stuff with Chick Corea after that. And he, he just changed and changed. He did some hip hop stuff too, right? Right before he died in like 1991. Like there's a hip hop record called Doobop, D-O-O-B-O-P, Doobop. Um, there's like rappers and stuff. So that's a course of like fit, what, from, from 1945 and he died in, in 1991. What is that, like 46 years? That's a long time, man. Just changing constantly with the time. So. Yeah. That's my, that's my answer to that is just just check out Miles Davis. I mean, even Duke Ellington's band changed. You know, Duke started in what nineteen twenty four, twenty five, and he passed away in nineteen seventy four. That's fifty years of music. And if you check out the way he played A Train in nineteen forty five compared to to the way he played it in nineteen sixty five, very different. There's a lot of you know there's a, there's a lot of life going on. You yeah. know, yeah. So, and yeah, and Charlie Parker. There's a quote that Charlie Parker said. He said, music is your own thoughts and your own wisdom. If you don't live it, it won't come out of your horn. So everything we live comes out of a horn, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Oh, yes. I remember what I was going to say about Hugh Reagan now. Thank you. You brought me back. Thank you. So Hugh Reagan said that there's an exercise that he does with students because he teaches at some, some college in Colorado. He says before each, well, bef at the beginning of each semester for his improv class, he has each student just improvise anything freely. No tune, just, 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 just make something up for three minutes. And that's how you really get to know yourself. You know, you just, you know, I, I mean, no, I would do it for like maybe 20 seconds now. I, okay, let's see. You know, I didn't know what I was going to play. So that's a good way to get to know yourself. You just play. Just, just, just play a melody and just, just, just play one note, you know, and make it sing. So that's how you find yourself and that's how you grow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else have any questions? All right, we got another one from Miles. Hi, Miles. Yeah, so I can understand that you're on the stage a lot, a lot in the spotlight, or maybe you have an arrangement that you have to come on. How do you relax when you're, when you're under so much pressure? I look to my right and tell Kenny to tell me a joke. <laughs> no, it's hard to, I mean, that's a deep question, man. Um, I don't get nervous so much when I'm playing with the orchestra because I've got, you know, 14 other cats up on the stage with me, but if I'm, if I'm playing, a, you know, if I'm playing a small group gig, or if I'm speaking, because I, I actually have a tendency to stutter. You probably notice it now, but it 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 actually takes me a lot of just just breathing and relaxing and just understanding that it's okay if I make a mistake, it's okay if I stutter. I think when I was younger, just growing up, if 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 I were to stutter, and if people would laugh at me, it 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 would make me feel stupid, you know, like I'm dumb or stupid. But now I know I'm not stupid. So I just do it, and if it comes, if I stutter, that's that's what that's what that's what's happening. But I, you know, but I know that I and I get excited. I'm I'm like I am super excited now to talk to you. So when that happens, if I take the time to breathe ah, and speak to you slowly, and just have all of my intent just with, to do just speaking and not being so anxious, I don't stutter. So I guess the same thing. If you're going on stage or, you know, whatever it is that makes you nervous, it's okay to be nervous. You know why? If you're nervous, that means you care, you know? That means you care about it. And that's a good thing. Yes, sir. Oh, all right. And on that note, we've been at it for about an hour now. Um, sorry about all the background noise. It's 7 o'clock here in New York. That's, that's in New cool. York. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The clanging. Everyone yeah, yeah. Op opens their windows and makes noise and stuff. I was going to play Star Wars today out the window. You know, <laughs> may the fourth be with you. <laughs> Never heard of that. Until today. My wife said that to me, to me today. I was like, oh, that's so original. She goes, Marcus, that's been around forever. I, I didn't know. <laughs> may the fourth have a yeah. lisp. Either that or uh, uh, take five, Dave Brubeck, since it's, you know, the, dress, the, the, the date is 5-4. Um, anyways, um, does anybody have any more questions before we uh, – before we call it here. All right, Kai, yeah. you've got one more quick one. Go ahead, yeah. man. Yeah. I like hearing from Kai. No, it, it, it can be long, it's okay. <laughs> All right. So what's the just, what's the like being a musician? You know, uh, I think I think all musicians are very privileged because they love music. They get to do what they love for a living. So I just, I just, I would like to know uh, your, your insight on what it's like being a musician and doing it for uh for your career you know getting paid to play music is like a blessing you know that's something it's you already want to do and then you get paid to do it mm -hmm. it's like fantastic it's just, man yeah uh so i was just wondering what what is it what's what's it, uh how how you feel about being a musician and what you would recommend to other people who want to try to uh enter the music industry it's fantastic man great question I can say this because you know, because I know where Kenny's come, where, where Mr. Ramp is coming from as well, and we're coming from we're coming from the same place. This this is a quote that I give students and I give myself if I forget it. So here it is: playing music or playing jazz or just playing music in general gives you the power to heal people. It gives you the power to touch people, and in turn that heals and touches you. 
So that's why I play music because I know that, you know, when I play, when it comes from my heart, which it always comes from my heart, I really want to touch someone. It's not, a, I'm not, I'm not out there trying to look cute or whatever, cause I'm not cute or just, just trying to show off. I really want to make someone feel good, honestly. And, and if I see people feeling good to my music or to our music, man, that makes me feel like I've done something good and that makes me feel good. And that's, that's why I play music. That's my answer for that. So just know that you have the power just to touch people or to heal people, you know? I mean, have you, have you ever heard a song that comes up? It's like, oh man, wow. Oh yeah, that, that kind of takes me back to when I was five or six, you know? I, mean, I can say that takes me back to when I was like 25 or 26, but, that, but that, that piece of music just touches you and just does something to you. And you have the power to do that to people, just to heal people. And just, it's, a, it's, it's a great blessing. So that's why I play music. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, to that point, Mar Marcus earlier mentioned, he, he used the word cathartic when he's asking you in your answering you in your first question, Kai. Do you remember when he used that word? What? You remember when, when Mr. Printup used the word cathartic when no. he was answering your first question? Well, do you know what cathartic means? Unfortunately, I do not. That's okay. Does anybody else, does anybody know what the word cathartic means? Yep. Can, can somebody knows share it with, with us all? Oh, cathartic is based on the word catharsis, which is to have sort of a, a coming out of yourself. Uh, when somebody has a catharsis in like a therapy session, it's, it's like a breakthrough. It can, be mm -hmm. a, it can be a very big breakthrough. It can be literally um, like seeing the world in a whole new way. That's cathartic. Yeah. Right. So it's a very strong word and it's a good word to know. And I wouldn't expect you to know that, Kai, because, Kai, I mean, you're 11. Um, but when you have a moment like that, it's a, a moment of healing. And to Marcus's point, Mr. Printup's point, you know, the music, playing the music is very healing. It's healing for the musician and for the listener. And that's why most musicians I know, and Marcus and I, I don't know if we've actually had sat down and had discussions, but through hearing him play and knowing who he is a, as a person, I know that that's what his intention is when he's playing music, you know? And it's a very powerful thing when you think about it, how through, through our breath, through playing the trumpet or playing our instruments, whatever the instrument is, we can affect another person that we don't even know in a positive way and help mm -hmm. them to heal and feel better about the world that they're living in, mm -hmm. you know? And that's a very deep thing. And, that's why it's so important, you know, that what we're doing, um, this recording of Armageddon. A lot of people are going to hear this, hopefully, and it's going to touch people. It's going to, I know the first time when I watched a video, it made me cry, man. Yeah, yeah You know, yeah. I heard it and it healed something in me, you know, go get, and especially given what's going, ha going on in the world, what's happening right now with COVID-19 yeah. and all that, the world needs that healing. Oh, yeah. You know, so you guys are all responsible for that, you know, so mm -hmm. I can't thank you all enough um, for being a part of this program, you know, the program wouldn't exist if it wasn't for all of you, you know, and allowing me to be able to, to be a part of it because it's healing for me as well. And the mm -hmm. world needs it right now. And I need it right now. We all do, mm -hmm. you know, and um, with that, with that said, man, I want us all to thank Mr. Printup for taking up his time. He's given up his time for all of us to be here. Let's all clap. If, if the mics are cool, man. if they're not. Thank y'all, man. Thank y'all. Good job, man. Nice job, Kenny. Welcome, respect you so much, Marcus. You too, brother. Nice job, Mr. Rampton. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate <laughs> you, man. And, and again, again, Mr. Rampton is always talking about y'all. On tour, he's always talking about the stuff that, that, that he wants to do for you. I'm, I'm not saying it because he's here right here with me, but it's, again, it's just such a blessing for y'all to have someone like him doing this. Um, you always will remember your teachers, so you know, just hold him right here, hold him close. Thank you, Marcus. Cool. I'm getting emotional now, man. Look at me. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you, brother. <laughs> all, right, all right, man. Thank you all so much, man. Thank you. All right. Hey, oh, can we, you got something else, Marcus? My wife sent me a text and said that she says, Kenny just sent a killing blues. <laughs> I listened to it. Cool. All cool. right. Yeah, yeah. I got no chops right now. So, you know, listen with a grain of salt. <laughs> all I'm right. right there with you. All right, man. That's it. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you all. Y'all take care. Yeah. All right. Can everybody else stay on the line just for a minute? Um, and I think we can stop recording. Cool. Uh, Gary. Good. Okay. And um, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here.